Welcome to the channel. As you probably already know, I do some of my best work on the toilet, but I can't show you that video. <laughs> That's on a different... Can't show you that video. But what I can show you is how to give a vintage white look to some brick. What would technically make things white... Er... I don't really like using paint on brick surfaces. My number one method for whitewashing brick is actually used a lime wash, but it means that your brick has got to be in good shape. And, uh, well, you should always make sure your brick's in good shape, but if it's not perfect, the lime wash is just going to wash over some of the cracks and holes and damage and yada, yada, yada. We're in an old house and this is the inside wall. They maybe, when they were building this house, they didn't intend for, you know, the brick to get exposed. So they were kind of sloppy when they did all the tuck and point on the inside. I've chiseled away some of the excess and now we're left with a pretty rough, raw surface. We just lime wash this wall. It's like rubbing your hand over, like you glued gravel to sandpaper. It is just not, not fun. So to give this brick a good old fashioned whitewash in good time, we're gonna use tile mortar. Any old tile mortar will really do, as long as it's white in color. I'm actually most fondest of this large format white tile mortar. Why you say? because it's what's left over after doing this wall. So that's what's gonna get used. Scoop yourself out a little bit of mortar into your wife's favorite mixing bowl that you're gonna destroy and go ahead and give it a little splash of water. Just like grandpa always said, you're looking for a consistency somewhere between chocolate syrup and milk. It's where the best brick whitewashing happens. Good man, that guy. Terrible brick whitewasher, but good guy. Learn from every one of my previous mistakes in life and throw down a plastic drop. Hey there, little guy. Where'd you come from? Okay, uh, and throw down a plastic drop cloth. That way, if your little blobs get down the floor, it doesn't stain whatever grout, substrate you have below, and then you'll have two problems. Now that you've got your work area all protected, it's time to casso that ass in a circle. Or um, just paint the lines pretty nicely on your tile. Same thing. Use a cheap chip brush that you can just throw away when you're done and get it in all the little mortar lines. I recommend not applying it to the brick if you can on your first layer. As you're working, your batch of mortar is gonna start drying out and it's gonna get thicker and thicker. Save that thick little dollop of daisy for the end and really cream pie it in there. Once you get about a foot or two Jackson Pollock on here, it's time to take it right back off. Not even kidding. Your first instinct here will be start dabbing and Picassoing it off so it looks perfect. Nay. While it sounds counterintuitive, you need to take as much of this mortar back off as you can as quickly as possible. When this mortar is wet, it doesn't look that intense, but as it dries, it turns more white. So if you just take off the bare minimum, you are going to basically paint this wall with white mortar. Keep washing your towel out if it gets oversaturated, and remember to wash this outside, not down your drain. You don't want four or five more problems today, including a backed up sewer drain because you ran a whole bunch of cement through it. Now that we've applied mortar to the wall and we've wiped that mortar off at least two or three times with a clean washcloth, it's time to do the best part. Let's wait 20 or 30 minutes for it to set up. Hold up, I'm cleaning up your mess. We're gonna need the mortar here, so just, I really like clean transitions, so. And just like that, you've got yourself a beautiful my wash brick wall with mortar. Man, if you had some damage or messed up spots, can't tell now. I used my finger, the trowel, and what felt like a shovel in some of the areas to really pack it in there. And remember when you're doing that final inspection to look at things from different angles. That way you don't accidentally miss giant gaping holes, like I did. The final step for our bathroom brick DIY will be caulking the seams. And I know a mason angel just lost its wing because I mentioned getting caulk anywhere near brick. But one of the big reasons why I don't like to paint brick is you need to let brick breathe naturally. Putting a bunch of latex and silicone caulk all over it throws that off. So I think the best practice here will be to seal this little section of this room off from the rest of the home. That way it doesn't let moisture penetrate to the bedroom and the living room downstairs, the dining room, areas that don't need that extra moisture. And it makes it look way nicer and finished and less sketchy. And that's what we're about on this channel making things look less sketchy. They can be, but the perception should be less sketchy. All right. Hey, this is the end of the video. If you liked it, well, do that liking thing you know that I like, so that way we continue this liking relationship. It might even lead to a subscription. Who knows? Uh, do whatever, it doesn't matter, it's fine. But if you didn't like this video, file a complaint in the comments complaint department down below and we'll get back to you within 48 hours. Ish. In the meantime, you can get ready for our next bathroom video where I take this ugly vanity and make it less ugly. Durr. Because I've got low expectations around here. It's the opposite of inflation. Unflation. Deflation, actually. Pretty sure that's it. Use some pla- Get out of there, little guy. Get in there. <laughs> yeah, you, you like that. Oh, you don't fucking like that. Okay. All right, anytime, focus Cannon, you'll get it. Come on, buddy, you can do it, come on. Hey, good job, Cannon. 10 seconds, not bad.